Hello and welcome back to Tea with Tracy. Come and see you live every Tuesday at 12, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate and home ownership related. Welcome back. I know I've been on hiatus for a couple of weeks, but we are back here with some new episodes. Today I have joining me loan officer James Lutz with Michigan First Credit Union. We're going to be talking about private mortgages. Now, some of you may say, well, what's a private mortgage versus just a regular mortgage? We're going to explain that to you today. So in just a moment, let's get James on to join us. Hi, James. Hey, hey Tracy. How you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. It's good to see you. Um, so thanks for joining us today. I know we're going to be talking about private mortgages and... Um, you know, can you first tell us, like, what's the difference between a private mortgage and just a regular mortgage or a traditional mortgage? Absolutely. Now, the easiest way to explain it is uh, a traditional mortgage, such as your FHA, conventional, VA, the stuff that everybody hears about, those are backed by the federal government, by FHA, VA, to where Basically, if the loan fails or if the person doesn't make their payments, the bank that did that mortgage is really not held liable. They get bailed out by the federal government. Now, a private mortgage is not backed by anybody other than the institution that lends out the money. So they just take a little more risk and they kind of get to make their own rules, which is a benefit. You know, we, get, we don't have to follow the traditional guidelines, if you will. Right. Okay. So, so you have a little more flexibility when it comes to, when it comes to the mortgages. And you know what, I am going to, I'm going to have to like put my, my headphones a little sideways so that I can hear, <laughs> I can hear yeah, you absolutely. as well. So it's a little, a little difficult for me to hear you through this. So, um, okay. So, so a private mortgage, then you have a little more flexibility. You don't necessarily have to follow some of those guidelines. Why would somebody want to use a private mortgage versus you know just a traditional mortgage yeah for sure some of the main reasons there's a lot but the main ones that we run into first of all are credit based whether you have low credit or you just have a lack of credit history sure. to where you just don't fit that little box that allows for fha and other types of loans uh right. some other great reasons are uh bankruptcy if you filed for a bankruptcy within the last two years you don't qualify for the fha four years for a conventional uh, so that's another great reason. And we haven't seen it in a while, thankfully, but if we do again, people that have foreclosures or short sales, that's right. another thing. You have a general waiting period before you can sure. qualify for a government backed mortgage, uh, a lack of two years of solid work history. Uh, another big one are non warrantable condos, which I can kind of touch on later. Um, those are condos that are not, uh, they're not warrantable for many reasons, whether it's not a fully built up complex, there's too many rental units, whatever. It just doesn't meet the rules for conventional or FHA financing. Um, those are really, those are the ones that I always yeah. see. I mean, there are yeah. little other reasons, but that's the main one that people run into. So there's a lot of different reasons why you may or may not qualify for a traditional mortgage and a private mortgage might be the way that works for you or works better. Um, yeah. Now, are there any reasons you wouldn't want to go with a private mortgage that you would prefer to go with one of the um, traditionally backed mortgages? Yeah, uh, absolutely. There are obvious benefits to a private mortgage that we just talked about. You can get around a lot of those things. But if you can qualify for a traditional government backed mortgage, you're going to have a lower down payment with a traditional mortgage. Typically, depending on your credit score, you're going to have a lower rate with the traditional mortgage. Um, that's the, those are the big two right sure. there is just yeah. your, your interest rates and, um, you know, sometimes the term too, because we do offer fixed and adjustable rates on the private mortgages, depending okay. on the scenario. But you're, if you qualify for a government mortgage, we're going to take advantage of that definitely sure. before we try to use a private. Absolutely. And, and I know like every person is different, right? Like today you're kind of giving us some general guidelines and information, but every single person's situation is so different. I know yeah. I've seen before that like there's a list of 40 different things that contribute to what your specific <laughs> interest rate will be, you know, like your yeah. loan amount. So so you can't just, you know, look at, it's not a one size fits all. So right. definitely want to be goes talking for, to. That yes. goes for your private mortgages and your government backed mortgages. There's right. no family, no individual is alike. Okay. And even the littlest nuance can make an impact. So you're absolutely right. 
Yeah, so take this information as general information, but if you need specific information for yourself, make sure that you contact your loan officer, your professional, and if you don't have one, James is always happy to answer questions. So, yep. um, yeah, so so how does somebody, um, you were gonna tell us a little bit about non-warrantable condos. Can you just touch on that? What does that mean? How would somebody know if they had a non-warrantable condo? Uh, the general public typically isn't able to really look that up for sure, but telltale signs could be uh, it's a newer complex where you only see one part of it is actually built and the rest is under construction. Chances are that's going to be non-warrantable because of, you know, they're built in phases. And if it's not built up enough, it's just not warrantable yet. Um, other reasons is they could have had their FHA approval, but they didn't reapply for it because every so often you have to reapply. And if the condo right. association complex doesn't do their due diligence to keep their approval, it can be right. gone. And Lenders do have access to a list where we can type it in and we just know instantly whether they're currently approved or not. Right. And there's some associations, you know, some are run by management companies. Others are just run by the the owners, the condo owners. And sometimes they don't realize that there's a few there's some paper that you need to that you need to <laughs> resubmit to keep that current. Pretty much so. like an application. You have to keep your approval going. Uh, one other reason, a, a good one is, let's say that there are 100 units inside of this complex and too many of them are being rented out rather mm -hmm. than being owner occupied. Right. If you have too much saturation of renters, that automatically will disqualify you from being warrantable. So that's right, another. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you, you do bring a good point. Just going to do a, look, a little sidebar here. When if somebody is shopping for a condo, that is something that you want to make sure that your your agent is asking the listing agent if you are purchasing for the purpose of renting. Some associations limit the percentage of renters for that reason. So because they want to keep their warrantable status, which, you know, keeps them open to a greater uh, number of or options when it comes to to loan products. So yeah, absolutely. And that's something that easily you and I or somebody like yeah. does what we do can check on upfront to just save a lot of heartache down the road. And it's very yeah. quick and easy. So yes, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, what else? Do, what else do we need to know about private mortgages? Walk us, uh, walk me through. If I, if I'm coming to you and um, I, I don't necessarily qualify for, you know, a tr traditional or government-backed mortgage, what, um, you know, what, what do we need to do? Okay, so this is thing that I like to tell people too is just to be fully upfront with people from the very get-go. I'm not. I, I tell you right away. Here's kind of the, the rates and the fees for a private mortgage are based off of your current credit score. So for example, let's say you had a bankruptcy a year and a half ago, but you've done your due diligence, you've built up your credit since then, and you've got 720 credit, but you still got that bankruptcy holding you back. You're gonna get a really good deal, a good rate, low fees still on that private mortgage. But if you do have you know lower credit, we're going to talk about that right up front because you're going to have a little bit of a higher interest rate and pay a little more fees at closing. And I'm going to be honest with you up front about what that is. And it's right. not bad. It may be a right, couple right. points higher. It's just, it's just different. It's because you're a riskier, right? So yeah. because Absolutely. even though it might not be government backed, it's still backed by the financial institution. And Correct. so they, they take a look at all of that. So, and, and you bring up a good point, something that's really important, especially if you're considering, you know, you might not be considering making a move, you know, in the next six months. It might be a year or two down the road. It's always a great idea to check in with your, your loan officer, your financial advisor, and just check in to see where you're at because there might be things, credit history, it's, ba it's just that, it's your history and your recent history especially. So there might be things that you can do to improve your credit score and your standing um, to put yourself in a better position when the time comes to make that purchase. Yep. And another great thing to think about too, is you're not married to that interest rate. So the people that I help with a private mortgage, there's obviously always a reason whether it's a waiting period on a bankruptcy or you have to build up your credit, you're going to get into the home of your dreams that you love but you're not going to be married to that interest rate and that private mortgage forever. You're, it's just a temporary thing to get you in. And then right. we're going to keep the relationship open, help you build your credit, wait for that two year mark to hit on your bankruptcy. And then we're going to refinance you into that long term, low rate government backed mortgage. But you still got the house that you loved. So right, right. You know, or these things are that you loved or if you're in a situation, you need to get into something or you just yep. want to you, know, you want to get in and start building equity because that's 
you know, especially those that are going from renting um, or even living at home, you know, building equity, that makes a huge difference in, in what happens next. So. Oh, big time. And I did one other thing that's very, very important about the private mortgages I haven't mentioned yet, which is the, the main thing I talk about. It is a 10% down payment minimum. So okay. you have to come out of pocket, put a little more skin in the game. Yep. Um, and again, that's also a case by case basis. 10 is sure. the minimum, but some files, you know, the CEO and the chief of lending, they're the ones that look at the files that I build and they personally approve them. So I always ask for 10%, but yes. they come back and say, look, I like the file, but uh, we're going to want 20% down. Then we'll give you the go ahead. So it's okay. again, case by case. Yes. Case by case. So those are all things. And again, all reasons to provide as much information as you can, you know, about, you know, what your holdings are, where things are at. And that's how you're going to be able to, you will be able to provide them with the, uh, the best situation um, and option. for. Yeah, yeah, for really, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, is there anything else that we should know about private mortgages? I think that's the main stuff yeah. is that uh, just know there's always an option. There's always a chance. It's always worth the time, the call, you know, we yeah. can spend 15, 20 minutes and just educate you and talk to me about it. And if you don't do it now, we can set you up, you know, to where you can now get your ducks in a row and make a plan for the future where, yes. you know, I'm not just going to turn you away and say no. Right. It, it, informed decisions. I'm so huge. I know you're, you work the same way. So big on informed decisions. And we're always happy to provide you with the information to help set you up for that next step, no matter when that might be. So. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Again, let yeah. me come up and talk Thank about you. What Yes. Thank you, James. I appreciate having you here. I think we're going to have you back on in the fall and uh, talking about um, how your rate is determined. So we'll yeah. talk about all those things. So if you're curious about that, stay tuned in a couple of months. We're going to have James back on. So thank you so much for joining us, James. Thank you all Pleasure. for tuning in, whether live or on the replay. And we'll see you all next Tuesday at 12 on Tutor Tracy. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.